going on guys welcome to another video on my youtube channel and today i'm going to be going over how to make a simple easy quick tog rig i will also be breaking down each component of the rig and most importantly i'm going to tell you why so yeah i'm gonna be honest with you the most simple rig simplest rig that they have for tog tog or for fishing for them that i know of is this this is the bottom sweeper it's the weight that's attached to the hook that has a color that matches the structure some people say it matches the crab or the bait that they're feeding on but anyway this is the simplest because this is all it is it's just this line connected to your main line fishing baits but not everybody wants to spend that type of money on these things and i find it a bit more fun to catch them on my own rigs but i've had just as much success with my own hand tied rigs as i have with say that rig the rig that i'm about to show y'all only takes a few seconds to make there are some key points that i will be going over again and this rig will help you get onto those togs but first let's go over the tackle needed so the first thing that you need definitely not high vis mono or fluoro 30 pound test is what i typically use i just have this color with me just because i mean y'all know what clear fluoro or mono looks like typically 30 pound is what i use for these rigs why now the reason why i use mono or fluoro fluoro is a little bit better than mono just because it's a little bit more durable and it's a little bit more invisible in the water but really mono and fluoro it's for the abrasion for tog you're fishing structure you're fishing in rocks you're fishing against wrecks so having this being able to be beaten up a good bit as opposed to braid is a very very important factor to catching these fish you don't want to just hook one and then have them break you off on a rock or something you want to be able to pull these fish up that's why i use 30 pound test yeah 30 pound test seems very overkill for a fish that size but it's a race to get them off of the bottom and onto your boat kayak whatever so you really want tough enough line to bring them up quickly as possible because they're going to be fighting you down they're trying to dig and get back into that structure because i mean typically you're fishing them vertically you're fishing straight up and down you're dropping the bait down there's no casting really involved i mean i know some people have been doing that lately but i, I that's beyond me i uh, yeah. but braid has no memory in the line mono and fluoro they do and i will get into the importance of that in a little bit and it's a very key point hang with me and i'll show you why but really honestly if if, if you only have braid braid is completely useless for this so just get mono get fluoro that's not green no braid no braid which brings us to these teardrop egg weights whatever you want to call them these are the weights that i use for this tog rig now when you're picking your weight for where you're fishing you always want to go as light as possible so do bring a variety of weights so you can adjust to the conditions of the water the most important factor of why i use these is its shape the shape of this weight is a lot more forgiving for snags and pretty much when you're fishing for tog you're fishing snag heaven snag central snagville and a lot of times you'll see like in my videos when i'm feeling for the structure i'm bouncing the weight off of the ground sometimes it'll get in between rock the curve to it as opposed to like a pyramid weight these will not get stuck nearly as much i mean they still get stuck don't get me wrong but they will be a lot more forgiving on you and your pocket when i've been fishing for these fish i've been fishing anywhere from like a one ounce all the way up to like a three i mean other weights will work i mean i've gone up to a four before which was uncalled for in that situation but that's what i had left but anyway moving forward now lastly kind of most importantly is the hook these are size three mustad j hook and they are black in color now i use j hook because a lot of the time the tog when they come up to eat your bait they will essentially come up and just kind of give it a crush first so setting the hook is a must and we do not set circle hooks now the reason why i use dark or in this case black hooks is because see if you can see this a little bit better the reason why i use black hooks because i mean it really kind of matches and blends in a little bit better with my bait you know if it's a green crab blue crab this will kind of blend in better than say silver or gold now you may want to change the size of your hooks you may want to go up if the class of fish that you're fishing is or, or those big jumbos the size three that i'm using they've been just about perfect from the 15 to 20 inch range some people do prefer the hooks with the longer necks or what is it the shank of the hook just because these tog do have teeth the longer neck of the hook will give it a little bit more forgiveness in having the teeth hit you know actually the line i've never been bitten off on the line with using these hooks at all never now it's going to happen that i said that the only thing that you may want to include in this is just the barrel swivel and all that's for is attaching the mono to your main line i never really well no I, I do not use barrel swivels but you can i'm just saying you can but i usually just tie my lines directly together uni to uni knot something like that hasn't failed yet why do i keep cursing myself but that's all the tackle the sun's going down where i'm at so let's get back home show you how to make these rigs 
All right, guys, well, I'm about to make the rig. Um, don't worry, if you can't understand or see what's going on here, I'm gonna be doing it with uh, some rope too. So that way you might be able to understand a little bit better. Anyway, start with about a yard of line. Again, this is just so y'all can maybe see it better. Never use any high vis for your rig. Have the hook tied up on there. Right now I have it snelled, but I mean, to be honest with you, usually I just do a uh, improved clinch knot. But anyway, tie up your hook. What we're gonna do from there, drop down about eight inches. Hold up here, you're gonna bring this down. This is the part that's gonna be going to your rod. And then back up. So now you just have this, you have this part here. Then you have your loop. Make the loop while pulling from this end, if you need extra line, down to where the hook's at. Just like that, all right? So then from there, you're gonna take where you just pinched and marked off right here. You're gonna take the loop end, just gonna go around, through, one. And two, just gonna pull it tight. That's the knot you made right there. Take that loop you just made, get your weight, small pinch, put it through the eye, just like that. And you're gonna take this loop, drop it around the weight. See, all I did was just come around over the weight, just like that. And your weight is set. And that is your rig right there. All right, before we go to the paracord, let me show you some key points to make this rig more successful. Uh, I gotta rig this up. I can't, I'm not gonna hold this like this the whole time. All right guys, so make sure when you make the rig that your hook is dangling more or less like that. You don't want it on its side. You don't want it real high up. I mean, high up, higher up will still work, but I still like it just close as you can to the same height or level as the weight without the hook being folded over at all. Having this hook closer to the bottom when you have your bait on there gives the bait more of a natural presentation. And the reason why we don't want the hook like laying on the side like this is because you just got to think about it. Like your hookup ratio, if your bait is on your hook and it's sitting like this, I mean, they're more likely to get the hook in their mouth with it like up rather than laying flat on the ground and like I was saying earlier like the hook on the side like if they come up and the hooks land like this and they crush the bait up you know they're gonna miss that hook they're gonna be feeding on the bait up here and the bait and the hook is not gonna be in their mouth as opposed to there if they come up and crunch that hook is already exposed ready to be set having the hook like this as well I mean I'm just I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have your hook off the ground with the hook tip up. This will allow you to feel the bite better and their bites are really subtle. So if you have this hook, I mean, you gotta imagine if, if the hook is sitting on the ground essentially like this, then that means that you just have slack in your line, you know? And if they come up and tap it, you're not gonna feel that. You don't wanna miss your fish. You don't wanna be down to bait. You don't wanna be pissed. So this curve right here, the curve in the line is essential because this curve almost creates like an arm, which brings your hook away from the weight which will prevent it from twisting up. It also provides a little bit of play. So like when the water's hitting it and stuff, it's gonna be moving the hook around a little bit, which, you know, will make your bait look more desirable. They're gonna wanna eat it. And it really, it just brings it all back to why we use mono or fluorocarbon and not braid, because braid, you're not gonna be able to get this arc. Braid is essentially just gonna be straight down and you're just, your stuff's gonna be fishing right beside each other and it's just not ideal. Now that I showed you how to do the rig, let me do it in slower motion with the paracord. All right guys, well this is gonna serve as our hook for demonstration purposes. As you can see, I got it all snelled up nicely. Anyway, got the hook. We're going to exaggerate this a little bit, but normally with the regular line, you do eight to 10 inches. We're gonna go up to here, all right? Hold right here to keep that link. You're gonna bring the other end down. To the same length as where the hook's at. So now all we're doing is we're taking this end and bringing it over to where you marked, right there. So now you see this end all set to go right here for your weight. Right there, we're just going to, we have it marked, take here, See how I have this in my hand? We're just going to loop around. See? So get that hook out of the way so you can see it better. All right, loop around. And then you're gonna go down, up through the hole that you just made twice. So you go one, 
And then again, just pull it around for that second time, just like that. See, that's all it is. And then you got, oh, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. Hey, what's going on, man? Not too much. You have a good Christmas? Awesome, you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's do it. Just recording some stuff for making uh, knots and stuff. I do YouTube stuff for fishing. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah, man. Have a good one. Happy New Year's. Well, it only took me a short conversation with the neighbors to be able to get this through the weight eye, but that's, that's all good. But anyway, it's through the weight eye, taking the loop, pulling it through, around, around the weight. Now that it's around the weight, Pull the weight. There you go. There it is. We are all good. All right, guys, I had to find a different place to end this video. Do the outro. If it wasn't obvious, you tie the end that didn't have your hook and your weight to your main line. Try to keep it like a foot away from that actual knot that you made. But I mean, I just I thought that was obvious, but I just put it out there. But I hope this video helps, guys. I really do. These fish are really fun to target. And I've just had some people ask about how you go about it. So I wanted to go ahead and clarify the rig that I've been using. Gosh, it's like one of the best, if not the best fish that I've ever had to eat before. So if you catch one that's legal, try it. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, leave it in the comment section below. I mean, guys, I don't mind making these how-to videos. I just need to know what it is that you want me to make. I'll do it. I do have a few kayak videos out of me fishing for these fish, so check those out. I'll put those uh, in the description or put them at the end screen of this video. They go more into like the bait, the gear. I mean, it goes into a little bit more stuff rather than just the rig. Check those videos out. If this video helped you, leave the video a like, drop that comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Got some things coming up. It's just been tough, man. I mean, this weather is probably just confusing the hell out of the fish anyway guys thanks for watching i will catch Ooh, that was a fish i will catch y'all later i almost forgot guys happy new year's and i hope everybody had a merry christmas and a big shout out to my girl who got me these sunglasses great christmas present she could kind of tell that my other ones had kind of had it catch y'all later I'm back home start editing later